Hello everyone, in this video we'll be looking at node specific shelf tools. Having code that will run on a specific node means that you can tailor your code easily for the given node types. This makes it more intuitive for the user as a shelf item will only appear if the node supports it and keeps your code self-contained. Let's take a look at how this works. As well as the main shelf on the top menu bar, every node has a shelf that you can access from the parameters tab. So for example, I'm in the Napo scene here. I've selected the sequence lighting node. This is a gaffer free node and in the parameters tab, you can see this cogwheel. And you click that and you can access the shelf items for this specific node. If we untick show only compatible, we can see all of the different shelf tools that are for nodes. So we've got one here for shading groups and one here that's for network materials. As well as ones for nodes, there's also a cogwheel for the scene graph and for the scene explorer. These work very, very similar to the main cogwheel, so we won't cover these. Instead, we'll just look at the node specific ones because there's some slight differences. You'll also notice if we go to my folders here under my dot katana, there is a folder for each of these different types. Let's go ahead and create something for our gaffer 3. Now what we want to do is write some code that will change the exposure for every light that is selected in our gaffer 3. If there is nothing selected, then it will change the exposure for all lights. This simple example will show you how you can access gaffer 3 nodes and parameters through the packaging system to make adjustments through code. Being able to build tools like this will mean you can speed up the artist's workflow as they can make sweeping changes to their scene in a few clicks instead of manually setting everything. So we're going to click our shelf actions here and we're going to add a new shelf and we're going to call this testing just like we did before with the main one. And then click OK. And this is going to create a folder in our shells node specific. And then we now want to go to our testing shelf and add an item. We're going to call this change exposure for pixel lights changes exposure of all selected lights if none selected keep lights and we'll do a keyboard shortcut of control alt e and we click ok this has opened up our code here and we're going to add in our code now before we jump into writing some code let's talk about the scope option up here in the doc string currently it's empty which means that this code will be available for any node type but we don't want that we just want our code for the gaffer free node and if we go back to katana and we select for example this variable enabled group node and we click here we can see that it's are currently available for variable and enable group nodes. But if we add gaffer 3 to our scope and we save this, go back to Katana and we reload the shelf, it's now no longer here, but we still have it for our gaffer 3 node. And if you need more than one node type, you can use a comma delimited list. With node shelf items, we get a reserve variable of node for the node that you're running the code on. And depending on the node you're running the code on, you might have other variables available to you. With a gaffer 3 node, we have selected items, which is a variable containing all the scene graph locations of the selected items in the gaffer. Let's use the console print function to print out these two variables to show that they are working. So let's change that from print to console underscore print and we'll set it to print out the node and selected items and we'll also set that to true so it will raise our python console tab and let's save this and we'll hop over to katana and let's run our code and you see it's opened our python tab and we can see 
a node. So that's our gaffer free node that's called sequence lighting. And it's telling us that we have selected this location, which is our kitchen window light. And if we select more than one and run it again, we get our two lights. And if we select nothing and run our code, then we get an empty list. And we can use this information to say, if the list is empty, then we'll want to run it for all lights. Otherwise loop through each of these lights and change the exposure. Let's now make our gaffer a little bit more complicated. So I'm going to add a gaffer three node above our current node. And let's set the root location to be the same of the sequence. And let's add in a PRMAN disk light, call this new light. And let's hop back to our sequence lighting. And let's just move this over so we can see everything. And we want to show incoming scene. And now we have our new light coming in from the previous gaffer. Let's bring this down and let's add in a rig. And in the rig, let's add another PR man light. Let's make it sphere light. And let's add a light filter of a ramp. So we've now got something a little bit more complicated. It's going to have to go down hierarchy and check and make sure it doesn't pick up light filters, that kind of thing. And lastly, let's add something that is not a PR man light. So let's add in a 3D light aerial light. There we go. So now we've got something that's a little bit more complex to check. So how do we know if something is a PR man light? Oh, actually, let's um, add in something even more complicated. Let's have a template material and let's set that template material to also be a PR man light and make that PR man light a disk light and then add a light and then make this light connected to our template material. So we've got a lot of different scenarios here. We've got lights that are inherited from other lights. Uh, so their exposure could be local or it could be inherited from the other lights. So if we set this one to be exposure one, for example, this is now inherited from there. So we want to actually change the template light and not the current uh, light. Also, uh, we have something that is not a PR man light. It is just a DL light shader. But anything that is of type light, you should get a PR man light shader from the material. So that's what we would actually want to do. We want to get the package and then from the package, get the material and then from the material, see if this parameter exists. If it does, then we can classify it as a PR man light and we can change the exposure if it has an exposure parameter available to us. Let's now get into writing some code. So the first thing we'll do is we'll have a variable called msg, which will be our message that will start off as an empty string. And if there's any issues, then we'll can keep adding to this message to then give it to the user at the end to say there's any problems. And we'll say if selected items, so if the list is not empty, then we'll have a variable called lights, which is empty. And if anything we deem as a light, we'll add to this list. And we'll say for item in selected items do. And what we want to do is get the package of this path so then we can then get the material node from that package. So we'll say p equals node.get package for half of our item. Now, if there is no package for path, so for example, when we had that inherited path um, from the previous gaffer, that one will not have a package in the gaffer three until you say you're going to edit that package. So what we want to do is have a try. 
So we'll try and get the package and if it fails, then we can pick this up and our, our code won't error will continue on to the next line. And we'll have an accept. So if there is no package for that path, we'll get a key error. Key error. And we'll say message and we'll append to our message and we'll say no package found for location and then we'll do a return we'll add in the item so where the parentheses are it's going to replace this item also do a general accept message in case there is any other kind of error that pops up. And we'll instead of saying no package found, we'll just say an error at location. So if we're able to get the package, so we'll do an else, then what we want to do is run a function called is pixar light for this package so we want to check to see if it is a pixar light and if it is then we'll add this package to our lights list so lights dot pend p and this is pixar light function is something we'll write in a minute and we'll have an else here so it's not a pixar light and we'll Again, append to our message and we'll say location where we are isn't a Pixar light. Do it return and format again with our item again. And we also want to do an else statement here so if there are no selected items and what we want to do is write a recursive function that will go through all of the child packages and find out if they are a pixar light so to be able to do that we first need to get the root package so root package is equal to and we have our node and we'll get the root package so all gaffers have a root package and then whenever you add anything like a rig or a light it adds a child package to it and that's what we want to do start off with the root package and iterate over all of the children and their children and their children so we want to write a new function that's called get all lights and we'll start from the root package and then we'll uh, recursively iterate all through the packages find out if they're lights and return that list and we'll store that in a variable called lights and then finally once we've got all of our lights we will add that here to the console okay so let's write these two functions add it right to the top here so first we'll do the a recursive function to get all the lights so that's really simple so we do get all lights and we'll give it package and we'll have a lights list that will start off as empty and then we'll use that to populate all of our lights as we recursively go around so we'll say 4p in package get child packages do so we'll get all the children of the current package we'll say if it is a pixar light then we'll append it just like we did before and we'll just continue to call the same function again and give it any lights we found and finally we return the lights now for the tricky function and that's 
the is Pixar Light. So what we'll do is we'll have a variable called found that we'll set to false. And if we do happen to find out that what we are the package we're looking at is a Pixar light, then we'll set found equals true. Now we've got a couple of different scenarios here. We've got a scenario that a light is using a template material. So if it is using a template material, uh, then we'll actually want to go to the template material to find out if it is a Pixar light shader. Otherwise, we'll just get the material directly and check to see if it's a Pixar light shader. So first of all, we need to do is see if it has the get template material method. And if it does, then we'll call that to get the template material. And if it does have a template material location, then we'll use that to get the package of that instead. So we'll use the if has attribute on our package does it have the attribute get template material if it does then we want to get the template material path from our package get template material So if it does have a template material path, then we want to try and get the template package. So just as before, we're trying to get the package again. Uh, so we're doing a package for a path that we've got from the template material. So it could be that it has a template material assigned to it, but that doesn't actually exist in our gaffer. And we'll do an accept. So if we get the template package, we want to get the material node. get material node and if we can't get the template package and we'll set the material node to none what we should also do is set the material node to none at the top here as well so it's always blank to start off with Now, if it doesn't have a template material path, that means it will just have a normal material. So we can test to see if it has the attribute of get material node. And if it does, then we'll run that. Now we'll also, if it doesn't have a template material, so it could actually be a template material instead of being a package that is referencing a template material, we want to run exactly the same thing here for that scenario. So it doesn't have a template material, but it could be a template material itself. And we want to do the same thing. So let's just uh, move that back one. So after running all of this, if there is actually a material node, then we want to get a shader param. So material node get parameter of shaders dot PRman light shader. And if it does have the shader param it's found equals true finally excellent let's just uh, 
that. Okay. And then we can return found. So let's give that a whirl. We have not made any mistakes. Go up here and run the code. So it's found this Pixar sphere light that we've got selected. And let's try selecting another one. So we've got two. We've got our two lights now coming through. Let's have no light selected. Does it give me something up here? Oh, is Pixar light is not defined. Let's jump back over to our code. Is Pixar light not defined? Where did I do that? That's going to be... Yeah, Pixar light. Hehehe, <laughs> silly me. Is Pixar light. Okay, let's give that a whirl. You know what's complaining about? Local variable material node reference before assignment on line 40. Nope. Material node. Okay, that should be good now. Let's give that a whirl. Yeah, and now we're getting loads of lights. Excellent, excellent. So now we've got our lights, we want to change the exposure of them. So instead of this console print at the end, I'm just going to get rid of that. So we'll say if we do have lights, then we want to present the user with a dialog box where they can enter the exposure they want to change. So we'll say the exposure value and OK equals Qt widgets dot q input dialog and we'll ask for a double. We won't parent it to any other widget. Say exposure for the title. and value for the label. So if you hit OK on that, then for light in lights, we want to change the exposure. So again, we'll get the material node of our light. And we'll get the exposure param. So from our material node, we want to get parameter of shaders dot PRman lights light params dot exposure. So if it does have an exposure param because not all PR man lights do. And if it has attribute of get template material again, then we want to get the template material path again. If we can't get it, we'll set the template material path to be none. Now from our exposure param, we want to get the enable param. So we'll say enable exposure param equals param.getchild 
enable. Can also get the value of that. So say enable exposure equals enable exposure param dot get value at time zero. So what we want to do is we want to check to see if it has a template material path and the exposure uh, value is not enabled on that location. If it is, then we want to say, whoa, 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 we don't want to actually change it on the light. You'll be better off changing it on the template material. So we'll do another message. Right. As template material and no local oh, make this a, a string exposure value skipping so we won't do that one and we'll do the format So we'll get the light name and the template material half. But oh, we didn't do the if enable exposure is equal to zero and the template material path is and there is a template material path then we'll do the message okay now otherwise we're good to go i say we should actually um continue from now so we're not gonna change that light and we'll go on to the next light so we'll do the enable Enable exposure param will set value to be on zero. So we want to turn it on and the value param is going to be our exposure param dot get child of value. We want to get the current value because our value param get value zero so what's the current value and i'll do value param set value of its current value plus the exposure value that we've set and we'll set that at zero okay and then we'll say if there isn't an exposure param We'll put in another message and we'll say light does not have exposure parameter light name again Okay, and finally we'll just say else for there is no lights, the message is going to be no Pixar lights found, let's make a string. Now I've got all of these different messages. We need to see if there is a message and we'll pop this up with a QT widgets dot Q message box. We'll make it a warning and we'll say no parent again and make it a warning for the title. Give it 
our message. Okay. So there's quite a lot of code that we just went through there. What we're basically just going to do is say, if there are lights, get the exposure value from the user, take that exposure value. If it does have an exposure parameter, then we want to get that value, add it onto what they want to change, uh, combine them together and set it. And that should be job done. Okay, let's see if I didn't make any mistakes. So we'll run this again. Now we've got a pop-up and we're going to change the exposure by one. And there you go. So it's gone through and changed the exposure by one. And we can control Z that to go back. And then we can specify some lights and run it again. And say it will minus 1.5 exposure. You can see it's changing all those. Control Z to go back. And let's select say something like this that doesn't have a package associated with it. Let's run this. Let's say no package found for this location. But then if we were to adopt for editing now, it will have a package associated with it and we can run the code. And we can change the exposure to one. Okay. And let's try it for this cheeky area light. And so that says it's uh, not a Pixar light and no Pixar lights found. Oh, belt lights wrong. Let's just quickly jump back and fix that. No Pixar lights found. Oh, blimey. Lights. There you go. I can spell lights. And you can imagine now if you had 200 lights and you got the note, can you change the exposure by one for all the lights? It would take you a while to go through each one and add one to whatever number it is, type it in, blah, blah, blah. Here you can just make sure you've got no light selected and run your code and change it and it will go through for all your lights. Let's also just make sure that if we do our control E, just pops up 